Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Mike here, and I got John right over there. Welcome to AXC Garage, and today's episode is actually gonna do something a little different. And we're not fixing anything, we actually gonna take this completely apart. John, tell me more. All right, so what we have here is a K24Z3 out of a 2010 TSX six-speed manual car. Uh, the car came, it was making a noise. Clicking, clocking, knocking, it was making a noise. Customer said, get me a used engine. We got a used engine from the junkyard. We pulled this out. And now that we have it here, me and Mike, we're figuring, hey, why don't we take it apart and film it? And we're gonna see where the failure is. And then we're gonna break the whole engine down for you guys to see. From the top to the bottom. So let's get started. All right, John, so where do we start? All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take off our intake manifold, lower intake manifold plenum here. We're gonna take off all of our accessories, our water pump housing, all that. We're gonna strip it down to it's just the engine, and then we'll start breaking the engine down after that. All right, so next up, we're gonna work on the water pump housing. Got a hose right over there. John, let's go ahead and uh, remove that. Once you get the hose removed, we have a 10 millimeter rail over here. It's a bracket holding the pipe, along with another 12 millimeter right here. Then we can work on the housing. All right, so we got all the water pump and accessories off. Next is the intake manifold. We got some bolts we, got, we can get to with the wrench, other ones we can get to with the gun. And over here we have a CKP sensor right there. Crank position sensor for those who don't know the abbreviation. All right, so we just removed this cover. Um, on other older K-series motors, this is where the oil filter is located. There would be a male threaded piece that would thread on, and you see it's the same diameter. On this year, it's located a little bit farther down, and it makes more sense because when you would change this filter, it would leak oil all down the side of the motor. And also, what you have right here in this Allen key, which we don't need it now, but it's always good to know, this is the block drain to drain the coolant out of the motor so that when you remove the head, coolant doesn't mix into the block. That is the coolant block drain. Very important for a clean job.
All right, so now we're getting ready to take disassemble the actual engine. So first up with that is we're gonna get the head off the car and that's gonna, or off the motor, excuse me. We're gonna start by pulling the valve cover and take a look what we have under there. Okay, so we set the motor to TDC. That means top dead center. That means valves closed on cylinder number one on compression stroke. So now we're gonna go ahead and disassemble the timing. Here is iVTEC in its finest. So what we have here is our VTC cam gear actuator. This will advance and retard timing on your intake cam. This right here is the strainer, which is a filter for the VTC actuator. Then what we have, what goes in this hole is the VTC solenoid. This will actuate and send oil into here and tell it which way to move. Moving across, we can see our three lobe VTEC. Center lobe, this is VTEC. These are the regular ones. This in particular motor only has VTEC on the intake side. And it also has the integrated exhaust port on this year. You may have seen uh, Busymoto has this motor in his Wago van. You can make power out of any motor if you build it enough. It's just a lot of people don't build this motor. Um, what you have over here, are your cam position sensors. This is how the mode, the computer will know how far to advance and retard this cam. This is for the intake, this is for the exhaust. This entire assembly comes off as a unit. If we were gonna be putting this back together in the car, we would go ahead and zip tie these together because it all kind of comes apart. But right now we're not too worried about that. So that's gonna be our next step.
All right, so we have the rocker assembly off. And just from looking at all of the rockers here, we can see that everything looks like it's good. Our cams aren't damaged. So I'm pretty sure our noise isn't coming from this area. You can see why we would zip tie it up because all of the little pistons for locking these together fall out. So the next step is gonna be to get the head off and we'll take a look at the valves from the bottom side. All right, so now it's time to take the head bolts loose. So normally we would not use an impact gun, but this engine's not going back together. So for time, we're gonna use the impact gun, but you always wanna loosen the bolts from the outside in. So we will loosen them in sequence, just not the right way. So we have the head off and without going ahead and putting the spark plug in and filling these chambers with say gasoline or brake cleaner, we don't know if any of the valves are leaking, but we can obviously see that these are our exhaust valves because they're darker. No, I'm sorry, our intake valves, they're larger. They have a black carbon on them. Our lighter color ones, our exhausts are also smaller, but it doesn't look like there's been any contact. So we know they're not bent from contact, but other than that, everything looks pretty healthy under here. Heads off. Now we want to get to the bottom end, which is going to contain our oil pump, balance shafts, connecting rods, crank. To get to that, we got to pull the oil pan. All right, looks like we got our first clue as to what's going on. We got a bunch of metal shavings in the bottom end. That's pointing us towards a failure in the bearings. Um, let's keep digging deeper and see what else we can find. All right, so what we have here is our oil pump slash balancer shaft. So right here, this section is the oil pump. This section over here is the balance shaft. This makes the car run a lot smoother, takes a lot of vibrations out of the engine. So what we have to do now is remove our tensioner for this, get our chain and guides off, then we're gonna remove our oil pump balance shaft. That's what's next.
All right, so we pretty much locked it down to where our problem is. So your bearing should have come off in two pieces, but this bearing is what we call spun. It has fused to itself. The two pieces have become one and they're stuck. See, we just got it to come apart. Mmm. That's not so very good looking at all. All right, so we have the mid plate out, mid pan. And what we have now is our crank. You can see these are our mains where the bearings go. They look like those are in pretty good condition. Normally these don't fail. If you have a failure, it's gonna be on your rod bearings. And also what we have over here, it's pretty interesting to see because you don't get to see it a lot, is this is the high frequency trigger wheel for the crank position sensor. There's a ton of teeth on here. On some earlier cars, you would see there's one over here with maybe 10 teeth on it. That just gives you a lower frequency. So this is able to very highly accurately detect the position of the crank so it can optimize your ignition and your fuel timing. Last thing we have to do is pull this out. So what we have right here is a thrust washer. These are very important. This stops the crank from moving left or right within its area here. Also what we have here are oil squirters. This is gonna squirt oil up onto the bottom of the piston to help cool it. And other than that, this thing's a wrap. She's completely stripped down. Not much left to see here. And just like that, guys, we got everything taken apart on this K24Z3 motor. If you guys like what you see, make sure you hit that subscribe button and also turn on that notification. My name is Mike, behalf of AXC Garage. Thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you guys on the next one.